bluesy kind of day in Unaka Springs. The rain has set in, my plans have been set back. So I've been stuck here at the house today and I thought I would do a little science experiment with you guys. I had talked earlier about electroplating some of those buttons that I had found just to experiment and see how it was done. I wanted to try and learn how they electroplated buttons and today we're going to go ahead and try and electroplate some buttons. We're going to be electroplating them with copper, not gold or silver, although I may try those processes down the road, um, but I'm going to need some different dangerous chemicals for that. So, things I wanted to say, a couple disclaimers before we get started today. Do not attempt this at home. Um, when you combine these chemicals, you create a dangerous chemical called parasitic, parasitic acid, and... Unless you know about how this acid operates and how it works and its flash point and it even has an exploding point, uh, this can be a very dangerous chemical. It's made out of rather innocuous ingredients, but when you combine them and heat them, the chemical reaction can be dangerous. So um, you're not going to want to breathe any of the fumes associated with this and you're going to have to be very careful at what temperatures you get this to when you're doing the boiling part of the procedure. With that said, here are the components we're going to need to do our electroplating today. We're going to need some hydrogen peroxide, just plain old regular hydrogen peroxide from the drugstore, some white vinegar, a 9 volt or 6 volt battery, whichever one you can get your hands on, some alligator clips, I like to have one red wire and one black wire, and some Scotch-Brite uh, copper pads. These are just scrubbing pads. You can get those at any uh, grocery store pretty much. Make sure you get the pure copper ones. And again, I'll try this again maybe in the future with silver and gold, but it's a totally different process, so you're going to have to evaluate that a little differently. That's the ingredients you're going to need, and you're going to want some rubber gloves as well for sure because uh, once we make mix these two together, it becomes toxic. So... All right, let's get started. Okay, so to begin making our copper ion solution, we're going to mix equal parts vinegar and hydrogen peroxide. So we're going to go ahead and I'm just going to use a half a cup of each of these. It's probably going to be more than what I need, but uh, I'd rather make enough than too little so there's a half a cup of hydrogen peroxide and a half a cup of vinegar I'm just using white vinegar so there we go now that we've mixed those two together we've created a uh, parasitic acid it's pretty dangerous it's toxic you need to wear gloves from this point on and when we start to boil this you are not going to want to breathe in the fumes so make sure you got a window open a fan on and also when dealing with parasitic acid you have to think of things like the boiling point and the flash point and this can actually even explode if uh, you get it to too high of a temperature so we're going to want to watch this really closely while it's boiling. We just want to get it to a boil. That's it. 
and uh, and then back it off. So let's let that roll and we'll come back once it's boiling. These fumes coming off here are toxic, so do not breathe these. Okay, I'd call that a boil, so let's go ahead and pull it off and we'll start to make our blue copper ion solution. Alright, now we're going to take our Scotch-Brite copper pad and we're going to dip half of it down into this solution and it's going to start to turn blue. There's going to be a reaction in there. And we want to get the water turned like a light blue. You can see that reaction happening in there. It's boiling and fizzing away. That's what we want. Now there is a difference in how blue you let this water get. Um, and that will dictate how thick or thin of a coating of electroplate you get on your piece. Um, but I'm not sure. This is the first time I've ever really experimented with it. So we're, we're going to kind of learn here together. That's starting to look pretty good in blue in there. So I think we might be about ready. You can see it's pulled a lot of the copper right off this Scotch-Brite pad. So I think that's what we want to have happen in here. We'll go ahead and soak that down in there. Okay, so here's the button I'm going to attempt to electroplate today. Now it does have some pitting and a little bit of corrosion on it, but uh, all in all, I'm hoping that this will take the electroplate. It is a late eagle button. It's post-Civil War. I would imagine this is Indian Wars era. So this is the button we're going to try it on. We'll see how it goes. I'm not exactly sure because it is an old kind of uneven surface but I've cleaned this uh, as well as I could with scrubbing bubbles and I feel like it should take some. You can see there's a little bit of guilt showing through so let's give it a shot and see what happens. Okay now that we have our blue copper ion solution and our relic ready to go we're going to take our copper pad and we're going to place it into the solution like that and we're going to clip the negative wire, the black wire, to the relic that we want to be electroplated. We're going to take the positive wire and we're going to hook it to our copper pad here. And hope we don't start a fire when we hook this all up. Now we're going to hook the corresponding wire to the corresponding pole on the battery. So the positive wire is going to go over here on the positive terminal and the negative wire is going to go to the negative terminal of the battery. And hopefully we should start to get some sort of a reaction. Well, something's happening in there. There's definitely some sort of reaction going on. We're getting some guilt on the button, so it's kind of exciting. It's working. Let's throw it back in there and let it run a while longer. See how guilty we can get this thing. Well, this lighting is not doing much to show you what this really looks like in person. But there's actually a pretty even coating of a copper color on there. And it's a color very similar to what the Scotch-Brite pad was. So it's definitely coated it with a little coat of copper. And it was a good look at how electroplating worked. Now this is not a process I would recommend for you at home. All you're going to do is destroy your buttons, which is what I've done to this button. But with that said, it was pretty interesting for me to see how they accomplished this process back in the day. Hope it was interesting for you guys. Hope you learned a little something today. I certainly did. And uh, yeah, it's a fun little experiment. Maybe we'll try it with silver and gold at some point. 
let's see if that is any different of a process and if we have any better success with those processes. So, all right, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please share, subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow.